Alright. Now, go ahead and snip. Well, we can let that cool and we'll clean up in a minute. Um, I'm going to move these guys out of the way. Again, this stuff is our output, so we're going to do that. But what we need to do now is do these last four wires to the to the tube here, two grounds and two power inputs. So, the red wires, the leftmost one connects to pin one, and the black one connects to pin three. So these are one and three, and these ones over here, black one pin eight and red one pin six, but we can just kind of do one time. So let's do whichever way you want. Do you want to start on this side over here? Well, i got to figure out where they're going to be so I know which one's easier to get to first and last. So one is this one, right? Yep, that's one. That's your... And then what's the other ones? Three, Two, six, uh, and eight. Three, uh, six, so I want to do six and eight first. Okay, so eight will be the red wire that's closest to you. This guy. This is a nine pin? This is the nine pin, correct. Next one is going to be we're over here. Six. Pin this the black, black one, one to pin eight. Uh, you just want to put the red one on pin eight. Sorry, I thought I read it off to you from the thing. Six is the red one, eight is the black one. And you may have cut that one too short now. Hopefully not. I'm sorry. That possibly was my mistake. We'll do the playback and see that it was probably me that screwed up. It's alright. I it's long enough I can make it work. Alright, so we want the black on eight. Yep. If you look right over there, black you can see them. Black to me on eight? Well, I, they both the same color from here. eight. Red. So this is, you can see the order though, you don't even need to know the color. One, two, three, four. Right. One, two, three, four. Right. So this six, first one you just eight. did is to six. Now the next one over is to eight. And, then the, and the third one, one is to one, one, and the fourth one is to six. Okay. I mean, it's to three. Two. So that's one thing she has fun with. She's uh, colorblind, so she can't tell the difference between red and black. So for you doing amps, probably it would be better for us to choose a different color for, say, the red, well, the I hot. Can see, I can tell this is red and this is black. But on the it's screen you can't. It's dramatic. If, it's, if I'm far away, I can't. But if I get right up to it, I can tell, I think. We'll see. Bitches. Bend the, the tab down a little bit if you need to. Cut it too short. Okay. You got it? Uh, Alright, cool. cool. Perfect. So do you want to solder those two right now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
horrible. Why does it look horrible? Because it's like this huge ass blob of oh, blob. It's, it's connected. That's fine. Alright, so now let's go ahead and get these next two. So the this one goes to pin one. This one goes to pin three. Mm -hmm. One, which will be right down the bottom there. Three up around the top. Alright, so we want to put one in, solder it, and then do three and solder it. Sure. That makes sense. It's not full, but it's the area where it's actually connected should be fine. It's like to me. And the other problem we have now that I'm seeing is that that input jack is really close. What input jack is really I don't close. like this input signal basically physically touching almost the wire, the pin. You didn't notice well, that until now. But we'll see. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. We'll have to figure that out. If we get no signal whatsoever, well. That could potentially be hairy, so we'll see. Okay. So can we extend the wire? Extend the wire. I don't know what that means. Add an extension to it. To and the so input like it wire? Around. Yeah. No, we'd have to rip the whole wire out and put a new one in because it's that shielded wire that we've carefully done everything shielded the right way. Let's just go ahead and put Where this one. Where's it attached to? It's attached here, and mm -hmm. it looks like it's really close to touching that pin. Now, the, the, another way we can potentially make it safer, honestly, would be to go like this. And bend that away a little. Does that look like I can't see from here? Is that physically touching at all between there and that pin? I can't see anything there. Mm, no. Okay. Maybe, well, the little piece of clear sheeting might be barely touching it. The sheeting touch. is protecting and insulating, and that's fine. I just don't want the wire actually touching. Actually, we can test it. Get that on continuity mode. Down one. Grab me the tips. So what we want to test here is if we have, we should have continuity from the tip of either input to that pin. Oh no, we won't because we've got resistors. I'm going to go past the resistor to here. We should hear a beep when I touch. Okay, that's good. And nothing there, so we do not have connectivity there. Oh. Good and good because if that's beeping, we need okay. So we do not have connectivity there, we're good to go. All right, so now just need to solder that last one in, and we do that. Then we'll do the yeah, output. Jack come up and around and not touch three. that one, yep. I guess, too. Yep, kind of angle it around in a way. A little bit of physical separation from the input will be good. fun soldering because that's right in the freaking way. So, now we've got to figure out the output jack. Do we need to look at schematics, see which way it needs to be turned? No. You're going to want to connect the black to this ground, and then we have to figure out, I think also we connected into there, let me look. Um, yep. 
Yep, so the ground is the black wire there. And that connects between the ground and the switch. Then we connect a feedback and one of the color, no, the black one here. I understand that. Oh, okay. I'm just it connects to, the, to both this one and that one. Okay. So you just run it between the two. Um, and then we'll connect either the green or the yellow. I think it's the green we'll want because it's the 8 ohm to the other one. I'm going to just look up that transformer while you're prepping the blast. did I just do? I don't know. What did you do? I just cut it, I guess. That's fine. You're supposed to cut it. No, I just, I was stripping that and it just cut. Well, then you probably were, then you just, okay. All right, I'll let you strip it this time. What? I don't know what you did. I if you go too stripping. small for the gauge, you can potentially cut it. I thought I was on number two, but I don't know. Make sure I use the right one so I don't cut it again because there's no going back from that. So we don't want to use the yellow one. We're going to only want to use the green one. That's the 8 ohm tap. All right. So go ahead and solder those guys. What we'll do with the yellow one is we'll cut it fairly short and then leave it cut clean. And then we'll put a little bit of um, shrink wrap over the end of it as well. That's also will just be yellow in color so that it can't accidentally touch anything and it will not be used. So What would it normally be used for? You can, you can have a switch on an amp that lets you choose different output uh, impotences, 4 ohm, 8 ohm, 16 ohm. It is. Um, I think I have a piece that would tighten that too. Where's the little one? There it is. Oh. Well, that didn't work. I'll let you hold it. Does that hurt my fingers? <laughs> Damn it. I think it's about as tight as it's going to get there. Alright, I'm going to put that back in. Yep, sorry. No, it's okay. I should have asked you first because I knew it was moving around and it was driving me nuts. Perfect. Now, um, the um, one of, I wanted to just test distance here is I grabbed another wire here. Mm -hmm. I want it to be the one that goes from here up and around to there, and I think that works. Okay, cool. It was just a spare piece of yellow wire I had. I wanted to check it. All right, so first, you go ahead and solder in the black wires there. All right. That's the yellow wire is going to be our negative feedback. Negative feedback. The job of negative feedback is if you don't have any negative feedback, the amp can start having a lot of distortion that's ugly and doesn't sound good. So the negative feedback, you peel a little bit of the output from the 
main output here and connect it back into the input selection with a small resistor. And that's what this small resistor does, is it allows it to come in at the opposite direction, that's what's negative, and subtract from the tone a little bit to make sure it doesn't get too harsh. It does also have a little bit of a change to the tonality as well. But how we could best get rid of this yellow guy. So we probably just tuck it underneath here. Underneath. Do this thing and then just tuck it under the board. Okay. There. So about how much? Let's just cut about that much away maybe. Um, just in, well we might want a little more so we can get it in, right. under there a little easier. Like about there. Yeah. So then we're gonna put just a small amount of this on the end as well. And where's our little torch? in there for the other components. And I like to pinch the end there just to kind of seal it. So now that's protected, we can let it cool, and then we'll just try and tuck it down like you I'll said out of the way. Yep. The board. Let me do that right now. Yeah. That even may be enough right there just out of the way. No, honestly, you know, I'm thinking about it. it might not have been a bad idea to put it out on the top, but that's okay. I think that's good there. Okay, so now this one, you want to cut it to fit there. Mm -hmm. And then we'll also put one of this. This will go in that same hole. What you looking for? Oh, sorry. That's one. I'm trying to get to it. And That's to one. I know. I'm okay. just trying to get to it. Did I do it? It again? didn't get anything. No, you just didn't strip it. it I like, did. You, or then you probably stretched the wire so far, or the sheathing by pulling so hard that it kind of extended, if that makes sense. There you go. That is not my strong point. It's okay. Tell you what. this guy so the way this one wants to go is it's going to connect from there to there so I think that's long enough to kind of do bolts so just kind of oops does it need to go it, you don't want it to go through you need to go under no right? I was gonna have it drop down and then run across the top there if that's not long enough we can use this one I just had this that piece sitting there so well, let me get this in here and see those. Grab the wrong ones. Okay. Alright. Yep. So 
So now just kind of get a curl on that end and wrap it around. That cool off yep. just a second. Yep. A couple more seconds. So it's So what I'm gonna do while you're letting that cool okay. is I'm gonna go get guitar in the speaker and then I gotta get my light bulb limiter because we're about ready to try this out. So. Are we really? Yep. Nah. -uh. Crazy. Alright. So I got this wrapped around here, as you saw. I'm just gonna solder this, and then we'll see what's next. Bill will help me with that part. Mm -hmm. I just do what he tells me to here. Only here. <laughs> All right, will you lift that fan up higher for me because it's gonna go right in my face. So should I, how should I do this? Because there's already some solder on there. Best way, you come down like that. All right. Come over to the top, I guess. Now let me just, just we just want to move golf on the top. Just no. hit me, hit me with that. All right. Good. Oh, it moved. It moved, but it came right back. I think it's good. A little test continuity. All right. Let it cool off. Alright. I don't know, that might not be shiny. It might be a dark gray. Alright, so let's grab that. Okay. Tell me what to touch. Continuity test. So you want to touch where it came from, which is here, but don't touch the wire, touch the metal post. Then touch the leg of the resistor, not the actual turret, because that means that the connection's going past the turret and the, on to the next point. The blue? This resistor here. You're not getting a like consistent touch, I think, is the problem. I'm touching it. All right, it's, 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 there's probably flux on it. See, perfect, now that I'm pushing all the pressure. All right, so that means that's well soldered and we're getting good throughput. Uh, the flux will build a crust across the top sometimes and you have to push at that point, you have to break through the crust that to get to the actual metal. Mm -hmm. That all is right. not shiny like the rest, is that a problem? Let me... I know you were saying that you don't want it to be like that. It's definitely a darker gray. I think what it was is it's flux. All right, so now what we're going to do here, we won't do your show on TV or on the, on the video here, is we're going to validate components first. The first thing you want to do is just visually check every connection looks correct based upon the thing. Now, there's kind of two ways to do it. I tend to always do it the wrong way, but it works for me most of the time. And that's to look at the, char the chart and then just do a quick test. But the hard thing about that is you can accidentally miss it. So what I'm going to do for Angie is I'm going to print this out. Ooh. Really quickly, and then she's going to go through and mark off every component one at a time that she validates is there and is correct. Okay, so we'll be back in a minute.